Hello guys and welcome back to another class of our course about the complete introduction to quantum computing. So in today's class we are still going to talk about uh, Microsoft Q and we are going to perform, well we are going to create a basic application uh, that is based with uh, on this uh, programming language. So basically what we are going to do today is we are going to give a value to a certain qubit and uh, this value will either be 1 or 0. So basically it's going to be a random value between 1 or 0. So it's pretty simple. So how exactly we are going to perform it? It's pretty simple. Um, so we are going to start our project the same way that we did the past project. So we are going to go on the view and go on command palette. And what we want to do right now is, is we want to create a new project. So let's call our project, uh, I don't know, let's call it Qubit. And we are going to create our project. Then we are going to open up our new project. Here we go, we have our project right here. So as always, you should have your Q code right here and uh, the other code right there. And this is the code that we are going to run uh, to work with. So basically the, this is the past code and if you run it, uh, you will have hello quantum world as an output. And uh, what we wanna do right now is pretty simple. We simply wanna work with, the, well, we wanna recreate this code. So basically, uh, let's start from the beginning. So we have our namespace right here, which is qubit. So we are not going to touch it. Um, next thing that we need, uh, next thing that we are go gonna look at would be right here. So basically we have microsoft.quantum.canon. This is the first library, the second library. So basically those libraries, we are going to keep them. And the next thing that we are going to do is add another library. So in this case, we would need a library to be able to use an operation. Uh, that we are going well to be able to work with another operation that we will have all right um, so let's uh, write it down so basically we want to import microsoft quantum measurement so this is the name of the library so quantum and here we'll have measurement so here is our library that we have imported so then the next thing so right now we have all the libraries that we need um, next thing that we want to do is uh, jump right here. So basically in the code section after the entry point. Uh, so basically the operation that we want to have is, uh, let's call our operation uh, generate generation, generate qubit. So let's call it generate qubit. And as a result, what we need, uh, it's pretty simple. We need a result. We don't need a unity. We need a result. Good. So then the next thing that we need to change is here. So basically we need to allocate the qubit. So basically with the, the well, we'll use uh, the using command. So basically we are going to use uh, Q. So in this case, uh, since qubit starts with the letter Q, we are going to use Q. And we are going to store qubit inside of Q. So basically here we are going to allocate the qubit and we are going to put the qubit in superposition. This would be the next step. All right. Simply adding the right parentheses. So basically here we are going to put the qubit in superposition. Here we go. Since we have located the Q, well, qubit inside of Q, uh, we put it here in superposition. And then what we want to do right now is pretty simple. We want to return our Q. So we have 50% of chance of uh, being zero or, or one. And we want to measure the qubit value. So basically here will be the line of code uh, to measure the qubit value. So here we'll have our return. And what we want to return is pretty simple. Reset. And in this case, Z. And this would be the operation that we need the quantum measurement to be, well, we need the, the library quantum measurement to be able to run this operation right here. Well, to be able to run uh, the M reset uh, operation function, I'm sorry. Here we go. All right, so right now we have everything that we need. Um, the next thing that we need to do, so basically this is our basic line of code, uh, lines of code. Uh, next thing that we wanna do is simply save everything. So just click on control S. And then what we want to do is generate our terminal that is just right here. So we want our terminal to appear. And then as always, what we want to do is run everything. So how exactly do we run everything? Basic, we just write dot net run. 
So as we can see, we have an error right here, All right? So it's pretty, okay, uh, the error is right there. All right, it's pretty normal that we received an error right now. It's because we named our project qubit. And uh, basically it's the name of a function. So let's uh, rename our project. Let's name it, for example, test and uh, try it again. So basically what we'll do right now, we are going to rerun everything. So let's just save our changes. So what we'll do right now is pretty simple. Uh, we are just going to rerun everything. So dot net run. So it's pretty normal that we receive uh, errors in uh, this, well, when we are programming. So this could happen in Python. This could happen in any programming language. Um, the most important part is really to see the mistake and uh, simply be able to correct it. So right now we had a, well, we had just few lines of code and uh, it was pretty simple to see the mistake. But uh, usually when we have a lot of lines of code, it's pretty complicated. So as you can see here, the answer is one. So if we rerun the program, it's gonna give us zero or one as uh, well as answer. Um, so for those of you who received again an error message, so what you can do is simply resave your project and rerun it again. Usually it's just uh, running the past project that you guys had. So just resave your project and rerun it again and you should receive the answer. So basically you should receive zero or one. So as you can see, this are those are the steps to create a basic uh, a basic qubit generator. So basically, a qubit number generator. So that's it for this class, guys, and see you all in our next class.